Elon Musk's brain interference technology business, Neuralink, shared its plans to begin implementing its microchips in humans this year. Neuralink, co-founded by Musk in 2016, is developing a chip that would be implanted in people's brains to simultaneously record and stimulate brain activity. It's intended to have medical applications, such as treating serious spinal cord injuries and neurological disorders. The entrepreneur is, quote, cautiously confident that the implants will allow paraplegics and quadriplegics to regain full bodily functionality. He went on to say that the company's requirements for implanting the brain-computer interface device are greater than those set by the FDA. Elon Musk, Neuralink to start implanting chips in 2022. During a live broadcast interview at the Wall Street Journal's CEO Council Summit, Musk stated that Neuralink plans to begin implanting chips in 2022. Musk explained that Neuralink has been testing in monkeys and that it's, quote, safe and reliable. He also stated that Neuralink's brain chip may be removed with ease. He's quoted by the Daily Mail saying that we hope to have this in our first humans, which would be people with severe spinal cord injuries like paraplegics and quadriplegics this year, pending FDA approval. When it comes to implanting the chips, he claims that Neuralink adheres to far stricter requirements than the FDA. Musk had wanted to start human testing by late 2020 and 2019. However, that was postponed. In February, he said that Neuralink will begin implanting the device in individuals by the end of 2021. This time, it appears like Musk is overconfident that the trials will begin in 2022. In a tweet, Musk reaffirmed the 2022 deadline, saying, quote, progress will accelerate when we have devices in humans. It's hard to have nuanced conversations with monkeys. Neuralink's purpose. Elon Musk's Neuralink, the secretive company developing brain-machine interfaces, showed off some technology that it's been developing to the public. Elon Musk co-founded Neuralink in 2016. This specific chip will be implanted into a human brain and will stimulate and record brain activity simultaneously. According to Musk, people who have Neuralink's brain chip implanted will be able to send commands to computers just by thinking about it. The goal is to eventually begin implanting devices in paralyzed humans, allowing them to control phones or computers. It might be interpreted as an attempt to defeat emerging artificial intelligence industries. The first big advance is flexible threads, which are less likely to damage the brain than the materials currently used in brain-machine interfaces. These threads also create the possibility of transferring a higher volume of data, according to a white paper credited to quote Elon Musk and Neuralink. The abstract notes that the system could include as many as 3,072 electrodes per array distributed across 96 threads. The threads are 4 to 6 micrometers in width, which makes them considerably thinner than a human hair. Neuralink's system consists of a computer chip attached to tiny flexible threads that are stitched into the brain by a sewing machine-like robot. Although not directly mentioned, this technology might help humans get the upper hand if AI fails, which most experts believe is a far-fetched possibility. It's conceivable, but not right now. The entrepreneur has often stated that Neuralink's brain chip is far more than the media portrays it to be. It's designed for those who are paralyzed, he added. Simultaneously, it permits people to extend their skills. In addition to developing the threads, Neuralink's other big advancement is a machine that automatically embeds them. Musk gave a big presentation of Neuralink's research, though he said it wasn't simply for hype, saying, quote, the main reason for doing this presentation is recruiting, asking people to apply to work there. Max Hodak, president of Neuralink, also came on stage and admitted that he wasn't originally sure that the technology was a good idea but that Musk convinced him it would be possible. Neuralink's brain chip also has been discovered to have medical uses. Musk stated that the chip they're working on will be effective in treating spinal cord injuries, Parkinson's disease, and neurological ailments. In February, he stated that Neuralink might begin implanting technology in humans by the end of 2021. Musk stated in 2019, per The Verge, that Neuralink aimed to start human testing before 2020. In April, Neuralink tweeted a video showing a monkey using a Neuralink gadget to play a video game. The device in the animal's brain recorded information about the neurons firing while playing the game, learning to predict the movements it would make. Along with helping people walk again, Musk has also said that Neuralink could help cure addiction and depression. In a tweet posted in July 2020, the billionaire answered a tweet from other users asking if the implant could retrain the part of the brain linked to the ailments. In May 2020, Musk spoke on the Joe Rogan podcast to discuss how Neuralink is set to have a version of its brain implant ready, quote, within the year. 
Musk explained that the process involves removing a chunk of the skull. Robots then insert electrodes into the brain and the device into the hole, only with a small scar left behind. The full or partial paralysis of the arms and legs is known as quadriplegia or tetraplegia. He also revealed that the technology could develop into a full brain interface in just 25 years, which would enable symbiosis between humans and AI. Regarding this, Musk said, quote, you wouldn't even need to talk. On the lighter side of things, Neuralink in 2020 said it was working on an interface that will allow the wearers to stream music directly to the brain. On Twitter, Musk had responded to a query and said that Neuralink's technology would allow people to, quote, listen to music directly from the chips. Neuralink also said in a blog post that it would use the $205 million raised to further develop its technology, which would allow quadriplegics to operate digital gadgets with their minds. The first person with spinal cord paralysis to receive a brain implant that allowed him to control a computer cursor was Matthew Nagel. In 2006, Nagel played Pong using only his mind. The basic movement required only took him four days to master. Since then, Paralyzed people with brain implants have also brought objects into focus and moved robotic arms in labs as part of scientific research. The system Nagel and others have used is called BrainGate and was developed initially at Brown University. Neuralink didn't come out of nowhere. There's a long history of academic research here. However, none of the existing technologies fit Neuralink's goal of directly reading neural spikes in a minimally invasive way. The system presented today, if functional, may be a substantial advancement over older technology. BrainGate relied on the Utah Array, a series of stiff needles that allows for up to 128 electrode channels. Not only is that fewer channels than Neuralink is promising, meaning less data from the brain is being picked up, it's also stiffer than Neuralink's threads. That's a problem for long-term functionality. The brain shifts in the skull, but the needles of the array don't, leading to damage. The thin polymers Neuralink is using may solve that problem. In interviews with the New York Times, scientists from Neuralink said that they hope to use a laser beam in the future to get through the skull, rather than drilling holes. However, Neuralink's technology is more difficult to implant than the Utah Array, precisely because it's so flexible. To combat the problem, the company has developed a neurosurgical robot capable of inserting six threads, or 192 electrodes, per minute automatically according to their white paper. In photos, it looks something like a cross between a microscope and a sewing machine. It also avoids blood vessels, which may lead to less of an inflammatory response in the brain, the paper says. For Musk, the central problem of interacting with AI is actually bandwidth. You can take in information much more quickly than you can push it out via your voice or your thumbs, but you're already connected to the machine, an idea most closely associated with philosopher Andy Clark. Therefore, the goal for this system is to allow humans to more quickly communicate with machines directly from their brains. Finally, the paper says that Neuralink has developed a custom chip that is better able to read, clean up, and amplify signals from the brain. Right now, it can only transmit data via a wired connection. It uses USB-C, but ultimately, the goal is to create a system that can work wirelessly. That wireless goal will be embodied in a product that Neuralink calls the N1 sensor, designed to be embedded inside the human body and transmit its data wirelessly. It may read fewer neurons than the current USB-based prototype. Neuralink intends to implant four of these sensors, three in motor areas and one in a soma to sensory area. It will connect wirelessly to an external device mounted behind the ear, which will contain only the battery. Some sources say that it would be controlled through an iPhone app. Neuralink isn't the only company developing brain interface technology. In July, a 20-person biotech firm called Synchron obtained approval from the Food and Drug Administration to start human testing. Now that you've watched the video, let us know what you think about Neuralink and all its possibilities. Thanks!